OK, Alan, so what's this large cannon doing here? Well, this is a Japanese cannon, but it's made in 1863, some 10 years or so after the Americans threatened Japan. So it shows that the Japanese could make cannon, although it was out of date by the time it was made and was only used, in fact, as a timepiece. But in fact, for many centuries, the Japanese had not made large cannon like this. Japan was surrounded by a large expanse of sea, so they didn't need a navy armed with these things. And within Japan, the central authorities didn't want to be faced with the citizens and lords who had cannon like this. So cannon weren't developed in Japan. And the, one of the consequences of this was that they never developed the art of cannon boring, making, so to speak, single cylinder piston engines, which is what this is. Out of this technology in the West, which was much more warlike and compressed, out of this technology developed the carefully bored ironwork, which made possible the piston, which was the background to the steam engine. So Japan could never have developed a steam engine with its technology, whereas Europe could. Many doors. <laughs> Three doors. Thank you. So, this is the vaults of the great castle of Osaka. So, Mr. Nakamura, this is a, a bear skin. Yes. Yeah. What about this? What is this one? Mm, we call uh, uh, China style, Chinese style uh, helmet. So they Cold. saw this in China and they yeah. brought it over here. And this is another one here. Yes. They're very, very different, these. Why are they so different? Mm, in, this, uh, in this age, uh, there were many uh, battles. So uh, many craftsmen uh, make uh, different mm -hmm. styles in, in the, the different areas yes, of Japan. Yes, different styles. I thought it was probably just so they could tell each other apart in warfare, but it's to do with the craftsman's skills and the flourishing of Japanese artistic craft. One thing that is very surprising, in a way, for someone from Europe is that in Europe, if you had started in 1200, you'd have had people firing bows and arrows and fighting with swords yes. mm -hmm. and with suits of armor. If you had gone on hundreds of years to about 1800, 1800. In 600 years, in Europe, the whole of warfare, the weapons had completely changed. You now had cannon, you now had rifles, you had an entirely different. They had given up swords, they'd given up suits of armor, mm -hmm. they'd given up many of their earlier weapons, and they had much more efficient weapons for killing people in 600 years. But in Japan, in 1200, they had suits of armor, yes. and they had swords, and they had bows. Yes. 600 years later, they had suits of armor, they had swords, yes. and they had bows. No change, oh. except in style. So why was it that Europe had this huge revolution in warfare, mm. and Japan no revolution? Mm, it's a very difficult question. <laughs> it is indeed. Can I just try out a theory on you, um, to s which is uh, what I thought might be the explanation. Japan was an island with very few people who could attack it. Uh, they had managed to keep China away. The Kublai Khan didn't manage to get in. So basically, there was no competition from outside. Within Japan, it was very uniform and very well controlled. And so you had basically warfare was like a game in mm. Japan. It was different clans fighting each other yeah. with the traditional weapons. So if you're playing cricket, 
against friends. You don't suddenly change the cricket bat into some other kind of implement that is better because everyone knows what the rules are and you continue with the same tools. In Europe, you had all these different yes. competing military regimes very closely together. So if the Spanish or the Italians suddenly invent mm. a new weapon, yes. then you have to immediately adopt it, otherwise you will be destroyed. So when, for example, gunpowder weapons were developed in Europe, very immediately they spread right across. Within 20, 30 years they were being used very widely. So it is the, war, the strong, aggressive military conflicts of Europe that lead to the very rapid evolution of weapons in Europe. Whereas in Japan, it's a peaceful place in some ways. It's just local sport and so on. What do you think? Yes, I think so. Ah, Dude. thank you. <laughs> so I say that Japan was a peaceful country. Yes. But looking at this, there's a great dent in there. What has happened there? A gunshot. A gunshot. Well, there you are. You see, how you have the two civilizations pounding against each other, the traditional armor yes. of Japan and the gun weapons of the West impacting on it. In 1615 uh, battle, mm. uh, the gun mm. shot at this helmet. So this is exactly 1615, one of the last wars in Japan. Yes. Because immediately after that, or soon after that, gunpowder and weapons were banned in Japan. Is that right? And for 250 years, Japan was the most peaceful country in the world. The longest period of peace that any nation has ever experienced or civilization was then happening until the West, with its aggressive weapons, iron, warships, machine guns, and so on, suddenly came and threatened. And when they arrived, they were amazed because they sailed into Japan and when they came, they saw on the cliffs all these cannon, and they thought, oh dear, the, the Japanese are quite well prepared for us. But when they went closer, they had telescopes. They looked up, and they could see these were pretend. They were made out of wood, oh, yes. just to frighten strangers. But the Japanese didn't realize that the Europeans also had very good telescopes and could see what they were doing. So Japan was then brought very rapidly into the modern world. Thank you very much indeed. I mean, you may think, I, I was earlier saying that um, the Japanese, there was no change in Japanese weapons. Well, it's even actually more amazing than that, because the Japanese weapons were more or less the same swords and armor for about 300, 400 years, from about uh, 1100 to about 1500. And then the Portuguese, as you said earlier, the Portuguese arrived with their gunpowder weapons. And immediately the Japanese saw these were very good weapons, and they made them themselves, and they fought wars with them between um, the 1570s, uh, 1580s, when Nobunaga was unifying Japan and Hideyoshi. So they used this weaponry. But as soon as they had unified Japan, they then banned them. And this is perhaps the only time in history that I know of when an, a great civilization has decided to go backwards, so to speak, technologically or militarily, and banned weapons. It is a, an extraordinary thing, and it is also encouraging, because it shows that we could, if we really wanted in this modern world to get rid of weapons, we could do so, because Japan has once done this. No other nation that I know of has ever done that. So that shows, explains why there is a, a weapon here, because for a short time, Japan and in fact, they were so good. I've seen films of the Japanese um, in the late 16th century, and their weaponry and their use of weapons and their discipline was better than European armies at that time, or certainly as good. So they could have developed into a great Eastern military force, and yet they decided that peace and order uh, was better, so they gave up weapons. Is that right?
cast in um, in um, the whole thing cast in one. So you've got the helmet, you've got the helmet.